once again, don't have a script or anything, so... I mean, when do we ever? <laughs> Alright guys, welcome back to another Mod Bros video. Today we're going to be doing an update on the C2S Simple Kit that we did a while ago. The c to Simple video revisited, <laughs> or reworked, yeah. sort of. Uh, as many of you know from watching our videos, we had some printer issues, so that's why we couldn't release the kit as soon as we would like, and we also couldn't continue working with prototypes, parts, and such, so there was a little bit of delay on that. Oh, also, I'm gonna pull up comments from the first video. Whoa, so you can comment on them. Is yeah. Comment on the comments. Not comment on the comments. Yeah, comment on the comments, but in the video form. So in this video, we already have the C to Simple Kit uh, finished, finalized, ready to re release. Uh, where So it's gonna be, hopefully, a shorter video than the last one, where the last one we were having to work through some of the issues, and also that was our very first prototype, whereas now I've made three separate C to Simple internals. M uh, mine, Mr. Nathan's, and then also a third one, which I plan on selling. Stay tuned for the video for that. But yeah, I'm just gonna be going over all the parts that you will get in the C to Simple kit, and then we're also gonna be doing a chronograph results with some worker darts. So I have the C to Simple kit currently installed in my C to right here. This is the C to S lower. So it's running the stock CETA spring and everything. And this is the alpha breach. So what comes with the kit, I'm gonna have to take this apart. Yeah, you can find that for me. So in, the, in your lower, this is purely stock. You don't need to touch the lower whatsoever with these modifications. You're gonna use the stock spring. So that's all well and good. The only issue, the only thing you're gonna actually have to do is work with your upper. So right here, I sort of have everything that's going to come in the kit. For one, you're gonna get a new plunger tube with the new mount. These are our updated mounts so that it fixes the issue where sometimes you have some hang up on the primes. They are now offset so that the plunger tube is held a little bit lower than the center of the blaster. This is my version, this is still like the second prototype version. Here's the finalized version that you'll be getting in the kit. Essentially, this is your new bolt, which you're just gonna glue on to the original pusher, breech, and bolt sled. With this, you can run upgrade springs. I've even tested this with the BT-27 and there was no flexing or any issues with that. And you do not need to get an upgrade bolt sled. So instead of upgrading your bolt sled, just change the geometrics of it a little bit and it'll work a lot better. That just glues right on. And then you're going to have some pieces that glue onto the front that help maintain the front, how far forward it goes so you don't have issues where the back of it's coming out of the plunger tube. And then you're going to get your barrel, which is going to come with some threaded adapters that will thread right into the original dart gate, like so. Mine has been taped in and whatnot, so I'm not really going to remove it. So I just have tuckers right here to show you. I believe we've decided that it'll just come with the one since nobody really wants to use the zero that comes on the original one you can if you want to just wrap some tape around the front and then throw your zero on but it's not really needed it will come with the foot of brass which from our estimations should be a little bit too long for the original spring by all means you can try cutting down the sprint cutting down the barrel because it's only using a 10 kg spring you can try cutting down the barrel to maybe get higher fps but that is up to you. I kind of assume that people who are getting this kit uh, not only want to really easily hit 200 FPS with just the 10 kg spring, but also plan on taking it further than that. Um, so for your plunger rod, this one that has this one has already been modified slightly, and then I have the fully finished product right here. Basically, you're going to get two pieces that clip onto the original O-ring slot to increase the o-ring you're going to use the stock o-ring i uh, originally was planning on using a replacement o-ring but i found that with this i was able to print it a little bit thicker so that it was stronger and i wasn't having parts break off and you're just using the stock spring the stock stock o-ring my apologies uh you'll get i put just like one wrap of teflon tape on it it's all you really need it's not a perfect air seal mine doesn't even have a perfect air seal but it's still firing well so it's one of those things where you can really try and fiddle with it to get a perfect air seal but it's honestly not that necessary. And if you want a perfect air seal, I highly recommend checking out the HMI kit. It's a little bit better than using these parts. Additionally, for your plunger head, ooh, you're gonna get, uh, if I can get it out, 
is a dead space filler. It's just a 3D printed part that goes in the front. You glue that in and it'll fill up all the dead space. And then I highly recommend you put a little piece of foam on it to pad your plunger head. But that will just remove all the dead space. So not only with this kit, since you're swapping over to a lipless XPT, will you get more plunger volume, plunger volume equivalent to that of a long shot, but you're also reducing the dead space that's in the original Retaliator platform. Which I think is a big pro. And not only are you doing all that, but you're also increasing the strength of your bolt sled without having to go with a metal bolt sled, which I think is a great thing in my mind because the metal bolt sled's like $40, I think. Yeah, and they're, this is 25 I don't know, it's been a while since I've looked at getting a metal bolt sled, but they are kind of pricey. Which I think isn't, and in my opinion, not very necessary. The last part you'll get, this one is from our old iteration, so it'll look a little bit different than this, but it's just a spring spacer that also that you're going to put on the plunger rod that also serves to not only get some extra pre-compression on the spring, but because of how it's shaped, you get a much more reliable catch and it's a lot smoother prime. You're not going to have the catch rubbing on the back of this surface here and trying to, uh, on the back of this surface here and trying to like pop over. It's going to have a nice gentler ramp to where it'll lock it right in. Um, so one of the comments that we got on our original video was that this seems like a lot of hassle compared to some of the other mod kits you have out there and I'll admit sure <laughs> it's not a drop-in kit you need to file this part right there a little bit you need to file those so that a bigger pointer tube will fit you need to glue a few things you need to cut that but all in all that's very simple work and if that's too much for you for all the benefits that it gives, then I understand maybe this kit's not for you. <laughs> but we like making kits for modders. <laughs> it's like maybe 20 minutes of work if you have a Dremel. Yeah, if you watched our original video, we I did everything in our original video. <laughs> yeah. So it's mm -hmm. honestly not that much work, but I can see your point of that it's not a drop-in kit and it's a lot of hassle. But additionally, he commented that the AK Blaster Mods kit will get you the same performance with an upgrade spring which if i didn't if i need to point out why that's an issue then that's maybe that's on them but being able to get 200 fps without a spring upgrade i think is pretty good because you're upgrading the spring to get to 200 fps i can do this and then upgrade the spring and get some really sick performance um Oh, additionally, someone asked about these adapters. We sell these on Etsy, and also we've shared this file on Thingiverse. So if you have a printer, you can find it. If not, you can let us know, and we will get you one. Another person asked about the pump grip. I'm assuming that was the, talking about Mr. Nathan's pump grip. You can go check out his channel, where hopefully he'll have a video up talking about his seat up. But I believe it. he said it was the foam technician one. Uh, Yes, I believe we say it in the video, so you can check out that. If not, our CETA simple kit, but our just review of the CETA, we'll say it in there. Uh, someone also asked about a long shot kit. We're getting to that. I currently have a nice little long shot bolt sled right here that I plan on modeling on some parts and filming. We're finishing, on the should be finishing. Should be finishing. Yeah, we have almost all the parts. I just need to model up a new bolt set up and then we can start testing those so yeah look out for a long shot kit in the future yeah, but also leave the comments below if you'd prefer a fully proprietary kit or a long shot simple kit because it'd be a clip onto the bolt so to reinforce it go in sink drain a whole bunch of stuff like that or we'll probably end up doing both just because we have one basically done so yeah you we could make a kit that would cost more but would just be essentially like a drop-in because you just yeah. replace everything on the inside. Or it would be a bit cheaper. Are we having an earthquake? No. <laughs> That's the only thing moving. <laughs> well, maybe a... Whoa. It's shaking. <laughs> earthquake, I swear. Uh, but yeah, back to what I was saying. Uh, we plan on making a long shot kit. Let us know in the comment section if you would like an entire internals replacement that would cost more or a cheaper kit that would require a little bit of modding like this one. We plan on keeping this 
this uh, internal kit pretty cheap just because it's a very few parts in order to get some really nice performance. Speaking of performance, let's go to the shooting test. Whoa, that's what you call a segue. Now that's a segue right there. Gonna move everything in the frame. We are firing off. I have 10 worker Gen 3s in a Katana mag. We're gonna fire them off over our Saturn A's. Uh, for people wondering, the prime with the spacer is slightly more difficult than just the stock spring, but still incredibly manageable. More important than anything you're about to say. <laughs> <laughs> Epic, D. Epic. Sorry, I got sidetracked by Tucker finding his Cita pins, finally. Uh, but yeah, so we're just going to fire off all 10 of these worker darts over our Saturn Ants and get a nice little average. That was 211. Had a failure to feed there. Interesting. First one I've ever had. 235. 208. Seems a bit more likely. 203. 209. We're halfway there, folks. God, I keep having to reset this. That was 199. 204. 195. 199. Wow. And then that one was 204. 192. 197. And 202. All 10 shots fired out. We had that one hiccup. I guess I just didn't pull back all the way in order to get the next dart to feed. I think you have a feeding issue. Yeah, I didn't load one dart one time, so I dry fired it. But an average of 206 across 10 darts. We had one that was 197, I believe was the lowest, and then there was a 235 as the highest. You could maybe say those are outliers, maybe just the kit's not super consistent. I would blame the lack of a fully perfect air seal. I'll show you guys my air seal right now. There's a little bit of pressure, but it doesn't really hold very well. Um, but yeah, I would say good 200 plus average on just a 10 kg spring. And pretty good in my opinion. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be it for this video, guys. I hope you like it. Uh, we will link a leave. We, <laughs> Whoa. I think I'm having a stroke. Uh, we will leave a link in the description to our Etsy where you guys can check out the kit and all our other stuff. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys like this video or like our channel. Uh, check out our Patreon and all that jazz, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace, everybody.